Tennis. Tennis. <laughs> I'm not particularly good at it, but I love playing squash. <laughs> My favourite game? Well, that's tricky. Game? Don't. Mm. I don't know. Mixture, I don't know, my get favourite game. I don't really play enough games, do I? Mulkey, the, the um, uh, finish out, it's an outdoor game. Funny enough, I do love being outdoorsy. outdoorsy. It's a very, uh, it's an outdoor um, game for several people. So it, it includes a lovely family game. <laughs> Board game or sports game? <laughs> <laughs> we're not games players. <laughs> no, we're not really. Um... Either Scrabble <laughs> or any game involving a ball outside or badminton or anything that involves a little bit of competition. And we'd be in Spain or something, we'd be able to speak, and then people would join in with us, and it was really cool. I'm not sure I will, because it's a very good game and I really like it. Croquet. <laughs> the only game I've ever really played. I just That's croquet. Okay. <laughs> I haven't got a favourite game. Don't play games, do you? Um, cards. I don't really do games, actually. <laughs> so this, you know, my wife tends to think, you know, could we perhaps sort of play Scrabble against each other? I don't know. I don't know, I'm just not, not motivated to do it, really. What do you spend your leisure time doing? Um, ironing. <laughs> no, no. But there, I mean, when... For games, but I, I used to I used to play rugby, but I'm not very good at playing rugby now. I'm a bit past it. I hung my boots up, and like my other hobbies that I did have, Parkinson's has actually put pay to that because I used to play the guitar. I can't do that anymore. I always wanted to play the piano, and I got a keyboard, 
but can't do that anymore. I can do with this hand with one finger. Um, I used to fly aircraft, but as soon as I started taking medication for this, that was me grounded. So it's a cruel sort of disease. Game. Oh, I would probably say Super Nintendo Mario Kart. I'm from a really working class background, so so my father, my father was a miner and he worked down the mines yeah. for 36 and years. When you look back again, so that was really was hard, hard work. work. And in that, <laughs> really in, that in my family yeah. life, my mother would have stayed at home when women didn't work. So yeah. I'm pleased that the, the situation now is that you know that's not the case. But if it means that you know, if it, I've just been up to the northeast and then you know the, the tables have t turned, so industry has more or less been decimated in the northeast and most of the jobs in the northeast are call centres, banking call centres and that kind of thing um, and it's women who mostly work and uh, are the breadwinners quite often so that's a, a progress in one way but in another way what time do they have for themselves or for family life you know has the tables turned so it's gone in the other direction and I think for everybody, you know, I do see campaigns in, say, on LinkedIn about four day weeks and I do think that, you know, I would love it if, you know, that was the norm, that people, you know, were well paid enough in jobs that they could work four days a week and have three days to themselves. I think people would be better off physically, mentally, creatively. Um, and but I also think you know you you, you know this I have you kind of have to hope that at some point we might realize I've, to raise children, my, when you're raising oh, children, you're busy anyway. Uh, thankfully, people do want to come out, so we, we uh, will have a we, we have a very busy summer season ahead. Would have been doing probably about two hours of somatic movement which is basically rolling around on the floor kind of yoga -y style movement um, I would have uh, gone for a walk um, I would have probably done some writing quite like I write a haiku a day so I probably would have written a haiku uh, but that takes time to just stop and be still and notice things and be reflective and on a busy day, I find it quite hard to do that. Um... Yeah, our diaries do get quite full. Mm. <laughs> Very full sometimes. Yeah, we're trying yeah. to make an appointment yesterday with somebody and we got yes. through to nearly the end of May before we found <laughs> the slot. Find a, find a slot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we are in control of our time, but it's up to us to manage that, I, I think. Yeah. It gives you the choice to say no. Yes. Yeah. What did you want to be 
when you grew up when you were little? The same thing. I still wanted to be a singer. I'm not sure I wanted to be musical theatre because I'm not sure I knew about that kind of world just yet, but I always didn't want to be a singer. How come do you think? I don't know, my mum always said I sung before I talked, so... My goodness, I wanted to be a pilot when I was little, which is nuts. Um, but yeah, I did, so yeah, and I'm not. <laughs> I had no idea. I wanted to be a doctor. I know what I want to be now, looking back. If I'd known then what I know now, I'd quite fancy being a forensic um, psychologist. Why? Because yeah. it's just dead interesting. It'd be fascinating. And it? yeah, I'd really love it. I'd also like to have been a gardener, a tr proper trained gardener. Why? I just, love, you just love it. I love gardening, I love being mm. out in the garden and I did a lot of gardening as a child and a teenager. I'd never ever be a cook again. No, <laughs> no. I was a very good cook. It was a disaster mm. being a cook. Well, that's fun. Probably spaceman mm -hmm. uh, when really little. Probably approaching teens, probably before teens, probably a movie star. And I think maybe at one point I might have wanted to be a pop star, maybe. But uh, never particularly seriously. Spa spaceman, I, I knew it wasn't going to happen. I've never wanted to be a footballer. Um, uh, or, or, or any sort of sport, anything. I, I looked at that and thought, that's not, that's not for me. But. Ooh. Um. It's an awful, actually. I can't think, I suppose I enjoyed dance. So I probably, when I was very young, thought I'd like to be a ballet dancer, but I was no good at I was no good at dancing, so <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> I wanted to be an author an actress or an athlete, none of which were particularly realistic. I always remember thinking. Oh, good question. When I was a kid, I really wanted to be an architect. And for a long time, I spent I spent most of my time either looking at objects. somehow didn't have to work ever again, what would you do? God, that's like such a dream question. That's like, if you could sleep with anyone in the world, who would it be? Because you just don't think about it because it will never happen. Uh... You, know, you didn't have to work at any stage of life. What, 
a lot of money you got, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to, think... to be beneficent, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think if, if we didn't have to work, I think we'd still want to be involved doing things. Because that's our character. Yeah. We might have done up another house. That's true. Yes. Yes, we've only done two. We've only done two. <laughs> um, I can't imagine not working in some shape yeah. or form unless physically unable to. Yeah. I think it's about using, using interests and gifts. Hmm. I mean, I did the sort of work I did because I loved drawing from, from a very early age. So to become a draftsman, to get involved in architecture and building was an extension of that. And I still love to sit down and draw watercolour and so on. So if you can earn some money doing it, but if I didn't have to earn money, well, I don't lazy. think. I don't think I would have had the life experience I've had if I didn't, if I hadn't worked. Mm. Partly because a lot of the jobs I went into was almost by accident. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> With you saying, "Well, give it a go," yeah. um, I did a lot of secondments that then became substantive as I went up the ladder. But yeah. um, you've been very good at encouraging each other, haven't you? Mm. I've got confidence in you. You can do that job. Well, I'll go for it then. Yeah, we supported each other in our studies. Yeah. Because um, I didn't go to university, um, but I subsequently I did sense. OU and then a master's um, part time whilst working. Mm. <laughs> it's like for punishment. It? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like there's some times in your life when you've been really doing a lot. Mm. Yeah. 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 Working and studying yeah. and working and training. And being parents. And being yeah. parents, yeah. Training to be, a, to be ordained was four years part-time study whilst doing a full-time job with a sick child at home. Mm. But I never get another thought. It did. <laughs> Somehow you you find the, the, the means mm. to do it. Yeah. It's only when you look back and think, gosh, that was hard work. <laughs> we were younger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you do if you suddenly never had to go to work again? I would um, probably do more of what I do now when I'm not working, which is spend more time meditating uh, and uh, probably moving, maybe creating some dance, writing more, um, uh, probably teaching mindfulness a bit more. Uh, I mean, I'm not far off retirement, <laughs> so I'm about two years probably, uh, off strictly of retirement. I'm 58, so I'm already thinking, well, what will I, you know, how, at what point will I think I've done enough in the workplace? I don't know when that would be, and I've got lots of energy. Um, partly, I think, because I haven't worked full-time all my life. My husband, on the other hand, who has, he's had no more than three weeks in a full, you know, full three weeks together holiday in more than 30 years. He can't wait to retire because he's exhausted. Whereas I'm like, I've got lots of energy and lots of creativity because I've only ever worked part time. So there's something to be said for that. But I could quite easily fill my time up with creative things because I'm still interested in writing and dancing and moving and teaching and um, learning Japanese. And I'm, I'm always looking for more things to explore and be creative with, so, yeah. And if you, like, somehow didn't have to work ever again, what would you do? God, that's like such a dream question. That's like, if you could sleep with anyone in the world, who would it be? Because you just don't think about it because it will never happen. Uh, I would try and do some, yeah, I would 100% try and do some good in the world, for sure. Um, I'm not sure what that would be, but that was my first thought, that it would just have to be something where you could just, yeah, do some really good in the world somewhere with your time.
When I was younger, I wanted to be a marine biologist. You know this because I've mentioned it on multiple occasions during our swimming sessions. Um, but I had a big old obsession with sharks. Um, I made my parents buy the film Jaws for me to I watch at a very At some point I wanted to be a president and a musical theatre actress and a vet. But yeah, aside from sharks, I've always loved the sea and swimming. On a surface level, I think people would say that's very different to being a composer, performer, writer, someone, you know, operating within the music industry, as, as it were. Um, but, I don't know, I think the role of the sonic and the visual um, is... Uh, now I just spend a ridiculous amount of time reading and writing. So, maybe closest to the journalist, but not any of the others. Feeling the breeze. Breeze. I like having different ways to say things. I can feel my eyes. Well, I have a lot of calluses on my fingers and this hand as well, where I hold my pen, which proves that I can write. I do play the guitar. How does your job make you feel? My job makes me feel... <sighs> but also... good. I love being busy. Um, and sometimes I feel stressed. I could cry at any moment, but for the most part, I think I feel really happy and grateful for the opportunities I have and the friends that I've made through what I do. Um, I'd read a book, I haven't read a book in so long, um, for fun anyway. Um, I'd have to rethink my whole week, wouldn't I? I would take the time to discover new music. I'd have a good sit down and just discover new things. Maybe go to an exhibition. Yeah, but also relax. <laughs> I'd also do nothing. Um, and cook myself a nice meal. I think I'd be in disbelief. <laughs> um, I'd feel happy, I think, immediately. I'd feel relieved because I hasn't really been a time in my life since I started school where I haven't been in education. Um, so the thought of having time to 
But then if I didn't have to do that, anything like that at all, I think I would just make music in the time, which would be... I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'd do. I'd, I'd go on holiday. And so I think that would make me very chilled out because I can't remember the last time I had a holiday that felt like a holiday. So yeah, I think, I think I'd be confused, but happy. Not a wall coming out of this one, I think. But if everything were wiped clean, all of a sudden we got super rich and then I have a good day in my life. I think that is some sort of utopia that we should all aim for and work towards and rally against. Rally against all the people who tell us we shouldn't be like that. I don't know. My favourite game, this is the easiest question to answer all of them. My favourite game at the moment is a game called Linky, spelled L I N K E. Um, and you get a collection of cards, and they have four questions on each card. And you, against everyone else in the room, individually, have to try and guess the answers to the questions. I think playfulness is about indulging in your natural curiosity. Like, often we just want to do things, to try things, to feel sensations, to like, go up to a leaf and just touch it. When I think of playfulness, I think of pushing boundaries. I think of camp. Um, serious take on serious things or vice versa. Um, I think of having fun with friends. If I didn't have to do any work in the coming week, I would go to the seaside. Oh, so again. If I didn't have to do any work in the coming week, I would probably go to the seaside every day. I'd swim in the sea and relax and read.
What I'm thinking of as in terms of a nine to five is like a really dull nine to five where you're just kind of looking at statistics and kind of moving them over there and then. But if it was like, I think I would still, yeah, I wouldn't be ideal, but it would it would happen and there's no point in thinking that I would completely crash and burn because that's not giving myself any hope, but yeah, no, not ideal, but it would be fine. I wouldn't hate it, I mean, it depends what it is, I suppose. Because I have other things I've wanted to do in my life, so I, if I couldn't sing, then it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's at least worth a go. <laughs> Like with money and yeah. stuff, you have to learn how and to say if you're like, going round things. Say if you know going into a shop. So you know how much you Yeah, I would like to get a job at some point. Why would you like to get a job? It would be nice to like, um, I, I think it's actually quite a nice kind of break, what I was saying, from work, from like my school work. And it's and like in the, it's just a separate thing. concerned about having to pay for things but apart from that I'm looking forward to it. Jobs, I would also be happy because climate change would stop them too because they can't they don't know how to build roads and everything them to stop um, to stop getting plants growing.
do like school, but it's, I just want to have a little break for once in like a few months. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to work hard at anything you do. Um, but there is this kind of stigma that if you want to be a musician, you've got to like work so hard and like, like just whatever you do, just work, 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 and that's how you become successful. And I kind of like went into like, over lockdown, I guess, because I wasn't really talking to anyone. Like, not talking to anyone, but I wasn't around other people as much. I kind of maybe went in a bit of a hole of just like, okay, I've got to work, I've got to work, I've got to work this whole time. And like, kind of forgot about, like, I've got to also enjoy my music. And like, that's the whole reason I, I'm doing this. Otherwise, what, what, what's the point? Um, so, and I think like, the, the, the term work is like, well, it kind of implies, like, to me it implies that you're needing to do this, or it's not necessarily something you enjoy by default. But I'd like, I think it's for me, like, as a musician, there should be a balance of work that you, like, it's like, oh, okay, I've just got to do this, I, like, get, get through the day. But also... I feel like, for me at least, if I'm working hard as a musician, it doesn't, I'm enjoying it. Like, if I wasn't, if I'm not enjoying it, I, I wouldn't be doing it because it's, it's, it is a lot to do, but the main reason why you're doing it is because you enjoy it or you get something from it or, yeah, I think, what was the question again? The question was, is it important to work hard to be a musician? Is it important to work hard to be a musician? I'm actually not sure that is how I phrased it, but that was the Okay, best. okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I think overall it is important to work hard, but I don't think, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you define a job? Just like, okay. I mean, I think I would, what would I do if I never had to get a job? Just like, I mean, I definitely wouldn't do nothing. I would always like, I don't like not being busy, but not in a crazy way. Like I'm not like always doing stuff, but I like kind of projects and making stuff. And so I would probably spend my time kind of But also, if I didn't have a job, I'd definitely invent some kind of job for myself. If I didn't have to have a job. Or just like, because, yeah, I would just need that, I think. Or like, not like not a job, but I would need to be busy. And like, busy making things, otherwise I would like, I don't know, it wouldn't go well. <laughs> It would be, everyone would kind of be just kind of chilling, but chilling, get, doing everything they need to do. I think it might take some of the unnecessary pressure off, but like, and I'm still thinking that everyone's working or like filling their time by doing things that are productive as such or fulfilling. Um, People have said to you, you've got to get a good job. What do they mean by a good job? I, yeah, I mean, I think in, in most people who've said that to me, when they're thinking about me and not like the system of life, mean 
a job that I enjoy, or a job that like, yeah, a job that I enjoy and fulfills me. Um, but then there's also that kind of stigma of a job that like allows you to live, otherwise you're just going to be some hopeless wreck who society holds up. But I think that's what like most people who say that from like a when they've, when they've thought about the question, that's what they probably, like deep down when you think about it, that's what I think the question should mean. Would it be so bad to be held up by society? Would it be so bad to be held up by society? Another hard question. That is, I think that is a tough one. Well, I mean, I think this idea of being held up by society is like, is, is like the problem, people who are being held up with by society, the problem lies with society, because it's a system that, like, the people who it's failed are the ones it's holding up. And I, I'm just trying to, right now, what I'm thinking about is like... I don't think there's anything wrong with being held up by society, but I think it's unfair the way you are treated if you're held up by society. Um, and it's, it's almost like... It's like that thing of, if you're treated badly... Being able to be big, not big enough, but like... Strong enough mentally to not treat the person who was in your position when you were treated badly and now you're the one. But like, I'll give you a classic example, like, when you're in year 11, the sixth formers will boot you off the football pitch because they're older. And then when you're in sixth form and you want to play football, but the year 11s have got there first, but it really annoys you when you got kicked off. But it's not like, you just got to let them play because they got there first. At least that's the way I see it. Or just work it out between you, like talk to them, just say, look, can we play in like 10 minutes? And I feel like it's like the people who aren't being held up by society have had to like grind through like the tough systems. And then they see, like, they're just like, oh, I've worked so hard for this, and you guys have just done nothing. But it's like they're then becoming the people that they hated. This idea of being held up by society is just like being in a, a position where a lot of like there's a horrible stigma against you, which I think is unfair. So I think in that in that respect, it's bad. But do I think it's good that there's a safety net for some people, and that even if the system is the one who've sent them there, it's yes. Otherwise, we'd end up with a worse situation. Sorry, that was a really big question, but you did very well at thinking about it. Thank you. Like this definition of a, like a, not a job as such, but like, not a job as such, but like everyone did what they needed to do to survive and what they wanted to do to feel fulfilled. Um, and that as, and like that was their like, how they lived. Um, it was like, I guess it was like a kind of community. And I don't know, that still probably feels like a, a job in my sense because you need to do that to survive. Um, or like, that they were doing it to survive and that's what they occupied their time doing. But I guess if no one had to have a job, especially right now, because I'm being like told like, hey, you gotta get a job, you gotta learn to get a job. Like, get, like do some degree so you can get a good job. Um, and it does all feel a bit ridiculous. Um, and I feel just like, because when you're a child, you, like, you're living in a world where you don't have to get a job. You just kind of, but your job is there. You just got to go to school. You got to do your work. We don't have to, but it's kind of good to. Um, and then suddenly, yeah, you get to about 16, 17, and you realise you have to get a job if you want to 
like live the life that you have lived so far. And I guess it would be nice in a way if like no one had to get a job, but everyone was like, I guess I just feel it would be quite tranquil. Well, in the Wergermans, in the northeast of England, there's Wergermans clubs in virtually every town, in the, in the town where I was brought up, called Hebben. I think they had about say, five or six Wergermans clubs, and they were all affiliated. So, and one of the things that I used to say when you went up to the door, and the, there was a doorman on every one, and he used to ask you, he'd say, "Are you affiliated?" Oh, yeah, you're an affiliated member of the Wergermans Association or something. And were you? Yeah, well, I, I didn't sign up for him. My dad signed me up so I could no. take him for a beer now again. for an engineering apprenticeship that is. I actually ended up in a power station in Kent called Kingsworth. Um, and then I was sent across the, the water to another power station called Tilbury and then West Thurrock. And then when I got, went to West Thurrock, I went in, I was just sent into a bed and breakfast and I went to the local pub and I fell in love with this bomb yet. So, she obviously fell in love with me and she didn't want to admit it. I'm not the sort of person I can sit around doing nothing. 
if I get if I if I'm doing nothing, I'll probably get into trouble somehow. I've got to find something to do. So just to fill any gaps in throughout my career, I have a, like a passion for uh, houses. And all my life, I've sort of done like old houses and period properties and things. I had bond conversions and things as a part of hobby, but part somewhere nice to, to live in and earn some extra money doing it. And at the moment, I'm building a. This doesn't sound good. But I'm building like a passive house, a very energy efficient house. Just shows what's better I've got left in the power industry. Not very much. No, <laughs> but it's, it's 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 going in the right direction. But uh, we've got to get rid of uh, natural gas and reliance on oil and that. We've virtually ain't wiped out coal in this country, anyway. so it's going in the right direction. That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know, I guess it would open a lot of doors for a lot of people to do what they actually want to do. Um, I'm not sure. stuff at home and stuff and like maybe go for lots of walks with my family and yeah. Uh, I can't imagine a world where nobody had to work actually. I, I work in a service-led industry and I think interaction on a day-to-day -day basis revolves around everyone doing something to contribute to society and I think it gives everybody a sense of purpose and I think we wouldn't function as a society if people didn't work, to be honest. I think it has to be done. I can't no. think anything could ever get done. <laughs> We'd all be relying, waiting for somebody else to do it. No, I can't imagine a world. I not I wouldn't want to be in a world where nobody had to work. It's what makes us tick, what makes us play to our skills. I can imagine a world, I think I could imagine a world where people have got the ability to enjoy life outside work as much as life inside. Yeah, that would be good. Whatever that would look like, I don't know. Peace. But And live in peace, yeah. Mm. Um, but I can't imagine a world where people didn't work in some shape or form. Yeah. It's what makes it interact. Working to earn a living to exist. Um, I, I, I basically think we've always got to be doing something <laughs> to obviously, otherwise, we couldn't exist really. Not in today's society. Imagine a world where nobody had to work. 
I suppose I grew up reading science fiction about worlds where that sort of happens. I think people want to work in a sense, people want to do something that's productive, you know. We all of us want to feel that our lives made a difference. I mean, you know, I, I work with the, the products of people's activity as an archivist. I'm there documenting the fact that these people made a difference. So I think everybody wants to feel that they've done something significant, whether that's something they're paid for or whether they simply ran, you know, I don't know, ran their local bowls club or something like that for 20 years and made, did a good job of it. And people, I suppose, yeah, maybe this is just my professional deformation as an archivist, but people want to be remembered, don't they? And they want to be remembered as somebody who made a difference. That, you know, we noticed that person was here and we were glad of it. Can you imagine if nobody had to have a job? Yeah, I can. And I think it would be amazing. By a job, do you mean paid work? Like, would, would, still, would things still be happening? Yeah, I often romanticised about living communally and unionising and not having a job and not needing to. It's really romantic. I know people who have done it and it hasn't worked out. I still think a part of me is like, I sort of like to think that I am not fixed to one place. I'm always going to be quite free-spirited and looking for something new and that I can see myself doing. If nobody had a job, then we'd all have probably a great, much greater sense of community, um, less pressure and more responsibility for where your food comes from and your role, your role in life, I guess, not just career, just like what are you going to do with yourself when, if you don't need to work, if you don't need to earn money, if there is no currency then, then it's, it becomes all about community, I think. That was a really long, really strange answer. Playfulness, eh, what does it mean? So playfulness. What does playfulness mean to me? 
Well, for me, I always think of playfulness in a movement sense. Because, um... love of life and lots of energy. To me that's being playful. You're always on the go. Yeah, just like being energetic. Like, yeah, and like having fun. Yeah, and enjoying things that you do. And like um and I have kids, I have dogs, so it comes naturally to me. Playfulness? That's an interesting one. Playfulness, I think of it in terms of happy, um, enjoyment, maybe being a bit silly. Uh, I think of it in terms of dogs. Um, well, I think playfulness is maybe the best human characteristic. Um, I guess like being childlike, being a bit of a kid. Um, Just teasing people for me, for my point of view. Having, just having a fun, fun with each other and slight horrid humour. Yeah. Especially with children, you know, watch children. I, 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 we haven't got children, but I could watch them forever because they're so funny. Playfulness is having a structure so about like um, a, an area, and I'm implying this. I'm thinking a, a task you may need to do um, some feet, let's say wearing, cooking, making, but having a structure of some sort, but not worried about the rules or the outcome. Oh my gosh, it's so important. It's, re it's probably one of the most important things in my life and the minute I lose touch with that is when I get myself in a, in a bit of a state and I feel like at the moment I have lost touch with that. That playful creative side of me which usually comes out in movement and being around people as well. And So being playful for me means getting down on the floor and um, moving in finding new kind of neural pathways and ways of moving that free up my body. Um, and when, when I'm in that state of mind where my body's quite free and I'd be moving around, my mind is also calmer. Being playful means being happy. Um... 
sharing um, time with others. Um, yes, and, and principally just having fun and being able to let go and um, enjoy yourself. Oh, everything. Um, I think it's a super, super important part of life. And I think, I think people should, um, I think in people who work in offices should have opportunities to play. So when you watch young children play, especially with sound, they're always playing with sound, in like with their feet and how they're tapping things and they explore spaces, they sort of will touch the walls and they sort of explore everything with their bodies and I think that's why it's so inspiring working with children because if you notice the way they are engaging with sound, it's a lot freer, pure way. Playful. It's not taking life so seriously and sometimes I can start my day and I can just think it's like obviously I take my work seriously and, and you have to and things like that but you can be playful in your day. Um, fly by learning stuff um, and, doing, and doing something fun at the same time. You're learning and you're doing something fun and um, that's, my, that's, my, that's my definition of Playful. Playfulness is a reduction in limits, openness, Aware, I got it. To be playful it means to be free. So I work part-time and I've worked part-time for a long time because that work-life balance of having more time to do other things is really important to me. I appreciate that I'm in a privileged position to be able to do that and not everybody can. Um, and I, fa I think it's really hard if you're working nine to five or even longer every day and you're exhausted, you know, and you haven't got time. You, know, you might veg out in front of the TV, that's, that's it. And I think it's really sad if people haven't got time to either um, uh, be surrounded by the arts, go see the arts, whatever that might be for them, visual arts or music or dance uh, or theatre, or um, aren't involved in, in the arts in some way. I think it's really sad if people don't have those opportunities or don't have time.
there are times that I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I should be doing something else. Like maybe I should be working, I don't know, in a boring nine to five job. No, I shouldn't say boring. In a nine to five job that doesn't require any emotional investment. Whereas here you are pretty emotionally invested in a lot of stuff. And it's hard to find that balance between your like working day and then having the energy to then give a lot outside of your work as well to your friends and to your family that ties into it i think that's just becoming when you work in the arts you're sort of fully immersed in it and you give yourself wholly to that i don't know if you can find a balance in it I am full time, yeah, which is as it's quite an adjustment because I was four days a week on my previous job and really liked the balance of having a your own kind of life. But yeah. why were you four days a week? Um, because I was working in London and then I was coming back to the house back in Suffolk, so four days in London and then three back in Suffolk, which is a really lovely balance. Um, and now I'm back here permanently. So and this role I think probably needs someone here all the time. Maybe, maybe that's up for negotiation. I already just was working a little bit at a time and my daughter was quite young. So when I decided to continue to work part-time, it was really demanding to work full-time with children and it just wasn't really conducive to that. So I continued to just um, do consultancy work part-time and be self-employed part-time and have more time with her. And then as she grew, I just continued to do that. And it was just good for me. It meant that I had time to do explore other things that are really interesting to me and have a good balance between work and family life and my own kind of things that I was doing. And that's still really important. But I do think I can only do that because my husband works full time in a well paid job because otherwise, you know, it's, it's a privileged position to be in. Um, and I'm really grateful for it, but I think many people can't do that. And it's a real shame because um,
But personally, I have, I, I'm struggling with it a bit because I'm, I spend the majority of my time looking after my two children, who are two and five still. And then I have this whole other bunch of work that's very varied in different places. So it's quite, um, I have to change gears a lot and I'm still getting used to that. So that's my challenge at the moment, is trying to be, fulfill sort of what feels like 10 different roles every week. Um, kind of. I think it helps when I think of it like that. I think if I feel like I'm working with my children that can, and that it's a valuable job, it does actually help me to validate why I'm not at work, if that makes sense. And especially coming out of lockdown, which was this huge expanse of, of just that for years, it felt like. So it's, it is really useful for me to switch into parenting mode. So it does feel like work a bit, I guess, yeah. Office life is great for a period, you know, sometimes you just have to do it, but um, we are very much uh, enjoying our outdoor type of life and our, the freedom that this offers um, rather than an office job. So is it kind of about having control of your time? Yes, it is. It's having that freedom to choose. I mean, we're in a very fortunate position. We can sort of choose um, what we do with our time, which, you know, is, is not available to everyone and also was, wasn't available to us for a certain period uh, time in our, our lives but um, as we're um, as we're getting on a little bit we, we have that we, we, we feel privileged that we have that ability to choose. is the most valuable thing. It's the most valuable thing because it does allow people to be creative and allows them to find other things to do other than work um, and be expressive and explorative in their lives. And I think people are so exhausted with full-time work they don't have time to do that. And that's incredibly sad. I know that in some cultures you know, some countries in Scandinavia, I think they're going to four day weeks, and I, I really think that's a, that, but it has to be four well paid days, you know, so you can have another day off. And I think that's really important because otherwise we um, live to work rather than work to live.
people can still, still come and see the stories that we keep like here and share them and use them in ways that I can't even dream of. But the important thing is that they will have been kept and preserved. Even if we sold nothing, we would still make art. I'm not sure I'd call it work. Oh, unless I, I you. Don't know. I'd still say. I'd still love to sit down. I was working at college and it's and so on. Um, so we could um, earn some money doing it, but we didn't have to earn money. Obviously, could only do evening concerts unless we were on holiday. That's good. I'd still sing, but worry less about everything. I'd still sing. I'd if I did something that made millions, I think I'm I'd still, still be doing this. In I some always, sort of capacity. I never. Because it's, it, it's part of my. I'd still be doing flowers if I wasn't being paid to do it. I'd do it in some form or another. I'd grow them and have them in, fill my house with flowers, but... I would still sing. Thank <laughs> you.